like a lot of people are wondering, gosh, why isn't this product selling? This is such an amazing product, or this is such Mm -hmm. an amazing service that I have. I mean, I've definitely been there, done that, and maybe I'm still going through parts of it. And so how did you figure out that this is the missing link? This is the problem before that other problem that you're solving. Yeah. So I think it's really about getting curious, like just listening to what people are saying and then getting curious enough to be like, Hey, can I ask you some questions and see if I can get to the root of what is actually going on here. And so it was sort of that I was realizing that over and over and over again, people were saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That all sounds great, but I need more clients. Like I need more clients now. Mm -hmm. And that is where I'm struggling. And then when I was like hearing some of the stuff that, because I primarily work with women, that they were saying it was really wrapped up in this like fear of selling and like coming across as salesy, as that like used car salesman Mm -hmm. kind of vibe. And so then I thought like, why does that not bother me? Like, what am I doing differently that it doesn't freak me out? And I realized it was like, oh, I just approach selling with this different mindset that has served me really well for all of these years. And like, if I could just teach women kind of like what I do and at my approach, then it would be easier for them to actually like feel good about selling. Mm. And then they would get clients more easily. They would make money more easily, like the whole thing. So then I just kind of worked backward from that point. I love how you applied it to your clients though, because you're right. I mean, that actually probably even goes into the form of why it's okay to sell yourself because you were providing Mm -hmm. something that they cannot do for themselves. And so it kind of like shifts that perspective of why you're selling yourself and not because you're like, Hey, I'm the best, but more like, Hey, let me help you. But I love that, that you actually applied that to your clients also. And I think that's a great segue into what you are doing right now in your business and how to help others not be sleazy or feel sleazy maybe. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now in your consulting uh, business and you know, things that you're teaching your, your clients. Yeah, it's kind of funny. So I still have, I have a really great resource. Well, I have, I have two, I have a free one, which is my no sleeve sales guide, which goes over my sales conversation process. And it's very easy. It's not like scripts. It's just like a, a conversational flow. And so it's easy to remember the parts and pieces of it. Mm-hmm. And then I also have a mini course called Conversations That Convert, which like leads into a little bit deeper helping people, whether you sell a product or a service, to really figure out like a flow of a common sales conversation so you can be as prepared and ready as you can be every time that comes up, whether you're doing discovery calls online, whether you sell handmade items at a craft fair, either way, it doesn't matter. It's, it still works for both. And so that's really like the selling aspect of it. And I, I definitely am always like on my podcast, I'm talking about all different things in business that make making money easier and feel more aligned. And then because I work like in terms of actual coaching clients, I work with people who are already established. So they they're making money, they're getting clients, they know, you know, what they're all about, like, they've gotten through some of those really bumpy early years, but now they feel really frustrated trying to get to their next level. And my people are very much like me in that we don't want to compromise our free time to make more like we don't, we don't want to say like, well, if I'm at, you know, 5k months, and I want 10k months, then I'll just work twice as many hours. Like, no, like my people and I, we are not about that life. And on the flip side is also like, we don't want to have to feel like we're selling our soul or we're compromising our values to make it happen. So I take people through the six essentials to 
have a thriving business that really honors who you are. And the cool thing about those is that they are really things that you like, even for me at every new level, or like when I'm feeling a new friction point around business growth, like if I feel like, okay, I've sort of hit an income plateau, I go back through the six and I can sort of reassess like, like, where's the gap? Like, what do I need? Like, where do I need to plug the holes right now? Or where do I need to bring an extra support or tweak something or whatever? And that's so beautiful that you have that in your coaching groups as well. And your consulting groups. Now, you know, we're talking about values and I've created my values. And of course they're, they can change. It's not that there's all, you know, written in stone, but quickly, how can somebody, where would they start if they were trying to figure out their value system and how would they kind of develop that? And twofold question. And then how would you show up in your marketing with your values? Yeah. So I would say, you know, there's obviously a few ways you could do it. Like I know there's huge lists of values online and you can go through and, you know, narrow it down to like three to five. I've, I've always heard like not more than five. And then, you know, if, if you're kind of struggling between two, like actually look up the dictionary definition, look, go to a thesaurus and see, and, you know, and this doesn't have to be like, you don't have to like perfectionist it, you know, yeah. right, like out of the gate, it can be something that is a process that you work on over time. So I think if you're like, ah, oh, that feels like homework, that feels really daunting, like, just think like, t- to me, it's the things that are like my non negotiables, right? Like, if, if somebody else doesn't have like a sense of adventure for life and business, but like, we agree on a lot of other things, like, that's fine. That's not gonna like, Mm-hmm. If, if somebody's more timid than I am, it doesn't mean they're not going to be a good fit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is like, if I'm sharing stuff on social media that is about like political stuff, like, you know, social justice stuff, like if I'm sharing that and somebody doesn't resonate with it, if they take offense to it, like we're not going to be a good fit to work together. And I would rather they just know, like, to me, it doesn't feel in integrity to pretend to be somebody I'm not, and then have somebody come into my orbit and potentially give me money and then find out later that they feel like, you know, surprised or upset that they invested in me because I represented myself one way when actually I was a different way. So uh, it's not that I'm like trying to recruit every person to Mm -hmm. my values. It's just that like, for me, I want to be able to show up in my marketing as myself. And if somebody doesn't like who I am, that's okay. Like you're allowed to not like me and not want to work with me, but also I'm not going to like sugarcoat myself because it's, it's my business and I get to show up however I want to show up. And Mm -hmm. the flip side of that is that the people that I end up working with, they're like actually people that I'm like, I want to be friends with you. Like, I want to stay connected with you. I feel very lucky to work with you. Uh, I feel lucky to get to support your business and, and all of that. It just feels so much better Mm -hmm. than every time showing up on zoom and feeling like Mm -hmm. I have to, you know, walk on eggshells or something. Mm -hmm. That's so wonderful. So before we wrap it all up, there's a couple more questions that I have. Yeah. So my one question is though, I know, um, you know, this is law chat and sometimes I totally forget to ask the legal stuff because I get so intrigued and involved in my guest stories, but what is a legal issue that you've had if you've had any And how did you figure it out? Yeah. So right around the holidays, the end of last year, I was looking for one of my podcast episodes. I was going to, I couldn't remember like when it had aired. I remember I was looking it up for somebody because I was going to grab the direct URL and send it to them. So I pulled up my Spotify app and I just started to search sell it sister. And I was like, why are there two sell it sisters. That's really weird. And 
that's not my logo. And so I clicked on it and I realized that it was two women had only a couple months prior started a podcast with the same name as mine. Well, first of all, I don't know why you would want to do that because then you're competing, like just from a marketing point of view, like you're competing with my podcast, my very well-established podcast that I already had for like almost two years. But also if you do a quick search, I own the trademark to yeah. that. So I sent them a quick email, like to the Gmail that was listed on their thing. And I was just like, Hey, here's the USTPO link. You can see that I own it. Like you can't, you got to change your podcast it. name. You yeah. can't use this. And they were like, uh, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And so then I was like, okay. So I messaged my attorney. I was like, Hey, so I know it's the holidays. Like, this is not an emergency, but like, can you deal with this for me? Because this is why I have an attorney, right? So I don't have to deal with it. She's like, yes. So she sent them an email. She copied and pasted like section 41 or whatever it is that I have the trademark under and highlighted. And they tried to come back and like defend it. And then she was basically like, no, no, <laughs> there's no defense on that. <laughs> No, like you're using you are the wrong. same capacity as what you have have registered for. There's zero defense on that. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was like, "Why are you going so hard with this?" Like, wow. I don't understand. They only had like a handful of episodes up, anyways. Like, I was like, "Whatever." So there was some back and forth, and then eventually they changed it. But I think they still have the IG. Either way, I was just like. This is like, it was kind of hilarious in some way because I was just like, this is such a bad business move on your part to, mm -hmm. to do that. So that was, yeah, that was probably like the most major and luckily it wasn't like a catastrophe, but um, I mean, I was just really hoping it was just going to be a simple cease and desist and they would be like, oops, our, you know, our bad, like we'll, we'll go yeah. change it. But yeah. Um, but I was really glad that A, I had bothered to trademark it and B, that I had, that I like didn't try to just deal with it myself, that I like brought in the professional to be like, can you help me with this? And yeah, yeah thankfully that's been like the only thing, but it was, it was like proof positive of like, this is why you do the legal things that you yeah. need to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, having that trademark registration is golden. So that was such a great move on your end to get that done from the beginning. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Well, I know there's maybe some people out there that want to reach out and connect with you. How else can they reach out and say hi to you? Yeah. So I would say um, ericatebbins.com is always your best bet just in case something happens with social media. But over there, you can find links to uh, all of my free resources, you can find my podcast episodes, blog posts, how to work with me, like all, all of that good stuff. But where I hang out online is over on Instagram at Erica Tevins Consulting. And I really do love meeting new people. So if you follow me, slide into my DMs, say hi, tell me you heard me on this podcast, because I, I definitely want to hear from, from the people who who find me all of the different places online. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom with us. I surely had a lot of aha moments in this conversation and I'm sure others will too. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was super fun. 